Hello, and welcome to this new lecture where we will talk about Tractor's audio setup. In this lecture, we will also introduce the Preferences window, where most customization options in Tractor's occurs. Let's start with the audio setup. If you are not familiar with audio drivers, sample rate, bit rate, latency, and all the theory behind digital audio interfaces, I strongly invite you to check my course about acoustic, analog, and digital signals explained. The easiest way to use Tractor is in conjunction with an audio interface with at least two stereo outputs, one used for the master output and the other for track queuing. However, you can use Tractor even if you only have a built-in audio interface with only one stereo output. In this case, you'll need to use a special cable that is able to split the stereo output into two mono outputs, where you can assign the master output on the left and the track queuing on the right. Of course, you will lose the stereo image, but it's a good starting point if you don't own an audio interface with multiple stereo outputs. Now, let's open at first the Preferences window and choose the Audio Setup menu on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we must at first choose the audio driver for the external audio interface we're going to use with Tractor. Usually, the audio driver comes with the hardware, but in this case, I strongly suggest you to keep your audio interface drivers always up to date by checking the manufacturer's site very often. Note that if no external audio interface is available here, you can always choose the built in sound card as the audio device. If you remember, with the onboard sound card option, you will not be able to pre listen tracks while another track is playing. From the same window, we can also choose the sample rate for your audio interface. Usually, the standard CD sample rate is 44.1 kHz. Here, higher sample rates stress your computer more, so I suggest you to leave 44.1 kHz. The couple audio driver and sample rate determines the latency. If this option is too low, you will hear audio clicks and distortions, while if the buffer is too high, you will observe latency. In our case, the latency is a short delay between when you press play on Tractor's deck and when you actually hear the song. It's measured in milliseconds and you can adjust it using the slider to set the audio latency that is suitable for your system. The suggestion here is to leave the overall latency below 20 milliseconds. If you're using Widow, you can set your audio latency by pressing the settings button to open your audio device's control panel. Once the audio setup is completed, we can configure the signal path from Tractor to your audio interface. From the Preferences window, let's choose Output Routing on the left-hand side. As already seen in the Common Setup letter, we can now choose between Internal and External Mixer. For the purposes of this course, we will use the Internal Mixing technique, which is easier to set up and requires no additional hardware. The Output Monitor Master left and right tabs allows you to choose the physical audio interface output where you can connect your headphones. From the output record, you can choose an output pair for the recording output, but as long as we are working in internal mixing mode, we will be able to record directly within Tractor. If you are going to use the special mono cable mentioned above, your audio interface must be set as follow. Output monitor left set to output L, with mono option checked, and output master right set to output right, with mono option checked. I personally own a Tractor S8 and, in my case, the configuration is output monitor as follow and output master as follow. And now the Tractor audio has been finally configured, let's move on to the next lecture.